Okay, for this video, I wanted to focus on when non-residents of the U.S. invest in U.S. real estate and earn rental income. Okay, so there is a particular election that a lot of non-residents should be making, and it's an election to classify U.S. source rental income as effectively connected income. So I've got one slide in front of us with the rules and a fact pattern that we'll look at, and I've also got... Uh, two PDF documents here. I've got a W8 ECI uh, that we'll need to go through and cover, and then a sample uh, Section 871D election. I'll get into more detail on this later, but this is an election that is included with a non resident uh, income tax return. Okay, so if we go back to the slide here, uh, we'll just start at the top, work our way down, cover some of the basics on non-resident taxation, and then how these elections apply to U.S. source rental income. So generally speaking, non-residents are only going to be subject to U.S. taxes in one of two ways, or perhaps both, depending on their investments. First, they're either subject to U.S. taxes on U.S. source income, that is FEDAP income. So FEDAP income is fixed determinable annual or periodical income. So that's the first way a non-resident could be subject to U.S. tax if they're investing in U.S. assets. Um, the second way is if they have any income that is U.S. source income effectively connected with a U.S. trader business. So what we're going to do here is we're going to focus on both because effectively what we want to do is switch the characterization from one to the other. Okay, so U.S. source for that income includes U.S. source interest, dividends, um, royalties, rents, other types of periodical payments, so annuities, insurance payouts, a lot of these things fall under the U.S. FEDAP uh, umbrella. Um, rents, again, are included, right? So that's the focus of this video. So when a non-resident invests um, in U.S. real estate and they decide to rent the property out to a tenant, the, the rental payments, the rental income, is going to be U.S. source FEDAP income. Um, and so if we look at, uh, again, the specific code section is 871, 871A1, states that when a non-resident receives U.S. source FEDAP income, they are subject to a tax of 30% on that gross amount. Okay, And the obligation to withhold this tax falls on the withholding agent or the person that's making the payments to you as a non-resident. And they have to withhold tax at a 30% rate under Section 1441A. Uh, now, this rate of 30% can be reduced by a treaty, but for purposes of this exercise, we're, we're not going to worry about the treaty rules here because we are uh, focusing more on this ECI election under 871D. So let's look at an example here to try to um, kind of illustrate this point. We have John Smith here. He's a citizen and tax resident of the UK, okay? So he is not a US tax resident in any regard. John decides that he's gonna get into US real estate investing. So he opens a Delaware LLC and he names it uh, John Smith US Property LLC. Uh, and John is going to own 100% of the LLC units. So he's the sole owner. Now by default, the LLC is a disregarded entity for federal tax purposes. And John decides that he's not going to be filing an entity classification election uh, via Form 8832. So what we're saying here is he wants to leave it as a disregarded entity. He's not going to file a C-Corp election. Now, using the LLC, uh, John purchases a single-family home in Orlando for $250,000. So the, the property was bought through the LLC. It's titled under the LLC name um, in Florida. So after that's done, John hires a property management company uh, who rents the property to a tenant for $1,000 a month. Now, before the management company can make any kind of payments to um, John's LLC bank account, they need John to complete a withholding certificate, right? So IRS withholding certificates are either the Form W-9 for U.S. taxpayers or some variation of the form WA, right? The WA Ben, Ben E, IMY, ECI, and so on. So, what does John do here? <clears throat> well, uh, again, the LLC with one owner is a disregarded entity for federal tax purposes, and so that that standard is found in this Treasury Reg here. Um, so, because the entity is a disregarded entity. 
Um, John, as the non-resident owner, needs to complete a form W-8 Ben because he's an individual, right? So a disregarded LLC that's owned by a foreign person does not complete a W-9. They complete a W-8. Um, so if John prepares this W-8 Ben and he gives that to the management company, the management company is required to withhold 30% in tax on those gross rental payments, right? So for every $1,000 John receives as um, a rental payment from the tenant, the uh, management company as the withholding agent actually has to take 300 bucks out and send that to the IRS. So this is the standard when you have US source FDAP income, again, which includes rents. So obviously this is an ideal, right? $300 on every payment is a lot. Um, so you'll notice here that John is thinking, well, shouldn't I be paying tax on my net profits, right? I mean, I can't even take any deductions when I'm computing this tax. And so here, um, here's what arises with this 871D election to treat it as ECI. So John's best course of action here, and this applies in most cases to non-residents, is they want to elect to treat the rental payments as U.S. source effectively connected income with a U.S. trade or business. So this election is filed by a non-resident um, under 871D. So if you look at code section 871D, it provides for a non-resident taxpayer to make this election to treat the income as ECI rather than U.S. source FDAP income. Now, what are the mechanics of this election? Well, first, what John's going to do is um, in addition to or in lieu of that W-8 BEM, he's got to prepare a W-8 ECI, and he's going to provide that ECI uh, form to the withholding agent. Now, once the withholding agent, so the management company, gets this thing, um, they no longer have to withhold 30% tax on that gross rental income. So they just make the payments into John's bank account, and that's it. Um, and then John is the one that is now obligated to file an annual tax return to report the gross income, report the expenses, and then pay tax on a net basis. Okay, so let's look at the W-8 ECI first. So this is what John's going to need to complete and provide to the withholding agent. So we have here the W-8 ECI, right? Foreign persons claim that income is effectively connected with a U.S. trader business. Again, that's what we're doing here. Um, so part one, information on the owner. So in this case, again, we have a disregarded entity that holds legal title to the property, uh, but ultimately the beneficial owner is John. Um, so we have John's uh, name up here on line one, and then the name of the disregarded entity that's receiving the payments is his U.S. LLC. So we got John Smith U.S. Property LLC. Now in box four, when they say type of entity, they're asking who is the person or entity on line one? So line one, John Smith is an individual. So we've indicated an individual there. And then lines five and six input the addresses. So we've got John's address in London um, up there on line five. And then line six is his business address in the US. He's just using a mail forwarding service. So it's okay to use um, that address. Or you can even use perhaps the management company might allow you to use um, their address. <clears throat> Line 7, um, U.S. Taxpayer ID number. This is absolutely required. You cannot complete a W-8 ECI um, or, or even make this election unless the beneficial owner on Line 1 has a U.S. Taxpayer ID number. So in this case, John has an ITIN. So he applied for an ITIN and we put that here. If the Line 1 foreign person was, let's say, a foreign entity that applied for an EIN, you would have the foreign entity name, EIN, and then an EIN number here. Um, lines 8A, foreign tax ID number, if you have one. Um, line 10, we have John's uh, date of birth entered there. And then line 11, we have to specify what piece of income we are treating as ECI. So in this case, we have U.S. source rental income that we're going to be treating as ECI with a U.S. trader business. So we enter that little piece of uh, information there. Just a one sentence will suffice. And then in part two, we review the certification, make sure all this information is correct. So John would check the box here and then he would sign print and then date and then provide this to the property management company that is the withholding agent. Okay, so. 
now that the W8 ECI is uh, prepared and provided, uh, the next piece is for John to prepare his tax return and make the election on the tax return. So um, once John prepares, so again, so John has to um, file a Form 1040-NR, right? That's a non-resident tax return. And he includes Schedule E to report the rental income and the expenses. Um, so, you know, once he completes the Schedule E, he's going to be allowed to deduct all these expenses that are related to the business. So if you have interest expense, you know, mortgage interest or credit card interest, uh, property taxes, property management fees, that's going to be a big one. Uh, repairs and maintenance, supplies, landscaping, security. I mean, you name it. Anything that's um, spent to uh, keep that rental property up and running is likely going to be a deductible expense. Now, the election is made on the very first year that you have this gross rental income that you want to treat as ECI. And once the election is made, you don't have to file it every single year, but the election remains in effect until you revoke it. Um, and in order to revoke it, you have to request uh, permission from the IRS to be able to do that. So the first year you make the election, you have to attach an 871D election. Um, and if you don't do it, uh, you can't treat the rental income as ECI. And what's a bit troubling is this is technically the rule even if you did everything else right. So even if John um, prepared a Form 1040-NR, he had a Schedule E, he reported all the income, all the expenses, if he technically did not include that election uh, statement attached to the 1040-NR, it's not ECI, right? So he has to report it as U.S. source of ADAP income, and pay tax on a gross basis. Not ideal. Um, so let's look at an example election statement. Um, it's pretty straightforward. This is just a sample one that was generated by some tax software we use, uh, which meets all the requirements. But you know, the statement up here at the top, um, just the heading election by non-resident to treat real property income as ECI pursuant to IRC section 871D. Again, that's the code section where taxpayers have this option to make the election. Uh, the taxpayer elects to treat real property held for the production of income and located in the U.S. as income that's effectively connected with the U.S. trade or business. Such election remains in effect for all subsequent years until revoked by the taxpayer with consent of the secretary. Um, so what they're saying there again is once you make this election, it remains in effect forever until you get special permission from the IRS to be able to revoke it. Okay, so it's not an automatic revocation. If for some reason you decide you no longer want it to be treated as ECI, um, then you're going to need to get uh, permission from the IRS to do so. And then this has to be signed and dated and attached to the return. Okay, so don't just, it's a bit, uh, they're a bit picky about this, right? I mean, they actually want to see a signature and a date. Um, so I always have clients, you know, print this out, sign it, date it, and then we attach it as a PDF attachment that goes along with the e-file or if you're um, paper filing, then you include it with the paper file return. Um, okay, so let me go back to the slide here, make sure we covered everything. I think we have. Um, yeah, so uh, again, that, uh, so that does cover everything that I wanted to address here. Um, I have separate videos that cover some of these things like US source of DAP income, um, how to do a W-8 then or W-9 uh, for foreign and disregarded entity. So I'll put those links below. Um, but yeah, that covers it. Thank you so much for sticking with me here to the end. And if you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. Uh, happy to answer and I can. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.